Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game video for you today. Look what we have in our shop. Joe, did this guy call you about this thing or did he call me? I can't remember. I think he talked to you, didn't he? Yeah, I bought one game off of him before and then he said he had other games and he was going to bring them by and this yeah. is what he showed up with. So he shows up. He, he um, I think the other one was a Mortal Kombat 2, but it was just a kit. But that's cool, you know. And he shows, he said he had another one. He go break it by, and he shows up with this one day when Joe wasn't here. And I helped him unload it off the truck. And uh, if you don't know, pole position was a very common game. It was easy to find back in the day. So we have turned down dozens of pole positions cheap because they're really hard to fix. Um, the game boards are, are tough to get going again. So over the years, we've shied away from them. And once you get them fixed, they'll break again pretty easily. We had one one time that worked fine. We moved it across the room, and it wouldn't work on that side of the room. I mean, they're just temperamental. Over the years, we've gotten a little better at working on them. So I think we, we could probably um, fix a board for it if we had to. But uh, when he brought it in, it doesn't have the board with it. So this is just an empty cabinet uh, that at one point was a pole position too. Now... Pole position twos, at least in the United States, were all pole position ones that were kitted into pole position twos. So it's had the uh, it's had the bezel change to a pole position two bezel. The original pole position bezel we actually have up here on our wall. That's what the original bezel looked like. Okay, so the difference between pole position one and pole position two is that uh, pole position two has four courses. Pole position one just had one. If you look, if we look back at the bezel, I'm trying not to make you dizzy. <laughs> if you look up at the top of the bezel, you see the Fuji Speedway. That was the track that you were racing on on the first pole position. Okay, so pole position two has four. It's got a test track, and then the Fuji Raceway. That's the same one from Pole Position 1. So if you have a Pole Position 2, you kind of got a Pole Position 1 as well. It's the same tracks in it. The Suzuka track, and then the, what does that one say? Seaside track. Well, that one looks, boy, that Seaside one looks tough, Joe. Mm -hmm. Whoo! Whoo, lordy. All right, so this is the condition that we got it in. This side looks pretty decent. Now it's filthy, but the filth a lot of times protects it. It likes the filth. So when Atari made stuff like this, the cabinets had a film already on it, and then they silk screened directly onto the wood. This is not a big sticker that they put on the stuff. They had a big white sheet of MDF or whatever. And then they silk screened on the actual piece once the the cover was already on it, the the uh, top layer or whatever. This side is much worse. A pretty bad ding there. Joe, you think you can fix that? Yeah, I think I'll be alright. He thinks he can fix it. Um, this is kind of rough. The back corner. The guy showed up with it laying down. A lot of the old time, this guy was an older operator. A lot of the old time operators, they didn't really care about beating them up a little bit because they were going to put it in an ice cream shop or something and the people didn't really care if it wasn't in perfect shape. So this front is just rough. So in the past, we wouldn't have even fixed this game. Now, if it was a different title, we fixed much worse. Um, it's just uh, pole positions are hard to get going. So it was, it was a lot easier to find a, a pretty nice looking... Um, specimen <laughs> but times they are a changing ain't that right joe that's right so joe's my my backup man i just say ain't that right and he goes breach <laughs> uh there's also the decal here that shows the four tracks okay so this little bezel is broken around the shifter and just you know all in all the thing's pretty beat up see the rust down on the pedal okay now let me show you the back of it which is worse are you ready for worse there's the 
door. That's probably the original door. It says pole position on it. Not pole position two. Okay. Um, here is the pole position two sheet, which was probably, yeah, look, see how the staples line up? So that was put over it at some point when it was converted to a two. So this bottom board is broke. The reason that's broke is because at some point it's been wet. So that's probably softened up a little bit or something. That's fixable though, ain't it, Jim? Yep. It's on the back of the cabinet, so. That's the part that faces the wall. That's the part that faces the wall, yeah. We had a game one time, it was a Buck Rogers uh, that we were selling at the house. <laughs> and I was writing up the eBay ad, we settled on eBay, and I said, there's a there's a uh, there's a piece missing uh, on the back, you know, the part that faces the wall. And Joey thought that was hilarious. That was 20 years ago or more. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Long time, long time ago, long time ago. All right, so this part up here is also broke. This was like a handle that you grab. I think I threw away that part last night, Joe. I found it laying in the floor. I could have used that. I've been looking everywhere. Uh, yeah. Oh well. So that's missing. Um, but on the back, that's just a piece of wood. I mean, that's very replaceable. Um, you've got some damage here, but that doesn't really need to be repaired. It just needs to be removed. Because again, it's on the part facing the wall. Like I said, the board set is missing. The guy said that he had the boards. Remember, Joe? He lied. He said he had the boards. So whatever he... It's on the back of his truck, and I'm like, oh, God. This is like the worst game it could be, really. To us, we don't like these, and we don't like Operation Wolf. Now, we love the game, it's a cool game, but it's hard to fix. So the guy brings it by and he says, Oh, I've got the boards up here. I've got the two boards for it. So if you don't know, these have, it's a dual board that goes in there. You can probably tell by the tracks. It's a two board set. Well, I've got the two boards up in the front. And so he goes up to the front and the boards that he has is he has a Pac-Man board <laughs> and he has a centipede board. So he has one board that's Pac-Man, one board that's Centipede. That ain't that ain't it. But I would much rather have a Pac-Man and a Centipede board than a broken dual pole position board, right? Um, and then it's missing the monitor chassis, but it's got the tube, and the tube is not necked. I don't think. Doesn't feel like it. I think we're good on the tube. It's got the CRT. Okay, and. Um, this is obviously from an Electro Home G07. You can tell by the frame. You can also tell by the yoke connector and that sticker there probably says it. Yeah. So if you don't know, like the classic arcade games, they only use two or three different monitors. Um, most of them. So um, it's missing the monitor chassis. And he goes, I brought you some monitor chassis. And so... Sure enough, he had like two or three G07 monitor chassis and a couple uh, Wells Gardner K4900 uh, monitor chassis, which have a little value to them at this point. And they were in decent shape. So, you know, um, I was able to get the thing inexpensively. It does have the two AR, AR2 power supplies that aren't really that valuable, but they're in there at least. And it's got the wiring harness. And so I made an offer on it. It wasn't much, and we got it. So we got all the... We got... Two boards that don't go to it. We got uh, th four or five monitor chassis, and we got a really beat-up cabinet. So, in the past, we probably wouldn't have even fixed this thing. This is one of the only games that we've ever parted. We hardly ever part anything, but we've probably parted two or three of these over the years that we just ended up with, didn't have the boards, and that was 10, 15 years ago. Um, We've, we've parted a couple Operation Wolves too. Same thing. A board is very very tough to repair. It's hard to find one that doesn't have board problems. So for many years, pole position, we didn't have the skill to fix. Not many people did. It was hard to find the board. Even if you had one working, it wasn't that reliable. Over time, like I said, we've gotten a little better at fixing them. But on this one, we don't even have the board. So what's the deal? Well, they have made a brand new board set for pole position called the Pi position. So it emulates the game using a Raspberry Pi. 
So we thought, you know what, we got this old beat up cabinet, let's buy that board set and just see how it works. So that's what we're going to do. In this video, we're going to work through this cabinet, get it back up and running, and then we're going to install that brand new board set in it and just see how it works. I was under the impression that it didn't work with the original gas pedal, but I've heard now that that's not true. So I don't know. I, I got bad information on that. <laughs> so we're going to try it out. Um, it's designed by Arcade Jason. And uh, we bought one from Arcade Shop, and we're going to uh, we're going to see what we can do. So this is what we're starting with. We wanted to give you a good before picture. What are we going to do first, Joe? Uh, I think we're going to clean up the sides. We're going to clean it up a little bit. That'll be first. We'll do a little bit of cosmetic stuff. That's the first cleaning. Joey has done the first cleaning. Let's see where all the filth was. The filth is gone, people. I wonder if it'll let me zoom in on that. Look at that. That's the MDF you're seeing under the vinyl or whatever. All right, so first cleaning. Now, we left all of the cigarette burns. That's what makes it authentic. And then this side cleaned up pretty good. That's about how I figured it would be. It was a spam call. Okay, so then inside, uh, he vacuumed everything out. And we have made a little power cord here. The power cord was missing. So it plugs into the side of the old power brick there. And so it couldn't have even been plugged into and it couldn't have even been plugged in the wall if we wanted to. But Joey has made a new one. Alright, Joe, so turn it on and let's see. Now there's nothing in it. Maybe the marquee light will come on. Okay, plug her up. I actually heard something. So the transformer is probably powered up. Hit the light. <laughs> All right, folks. It's coming back. One light bulb is working. Wow. You hear it, though? The transformer's got juice going through it. Okay, Joe, turn the lights back on. All right, so it's trying to cooperate. I mean, that's all it can really do right now. There's nothing else in it. The marquee light doesn't work, but it's probably just burnt out. Okay, so uh, next thing we need to do is check the voltages coming out of that power brick down there. Since we're putting a brand new board in it, I'm trying to decide if we should... I don't know how that thing gets power, so I'm trying to decide if we really need to replace both big blues and all of that. So there's these big filter capacitors in the bottom of Atari arcade games that they call the Big Blue because it's a Big Blue capacitor. It filters the 10.6 volts or 10.3 volts, whatever it is, that uh, the power boards rectify down to or uh, regulate down to 5 volts. Um, they go bad after so many years, but you can test them. So. I don't know. So uh, we're going to test the uh, voltages coming out of the power bricks over to the two power supplies and then check the voltages coming out of the two power supplies. So this is a replacement big blue. This is what's in the bottom of it. So we've bought a replacement from Arcade Shop. The way you can test your old one is uh, you put it on AC and you check across the two legs of the uh, capacitor while it's turned on and you see if it's got more than half a volt or so of AC on it. If it does, replace the cap. If it doesn't, you're good. So we're going to check that. Alright Joe, he's checking one of them right now. What is your DC voltage across the two? 14.1. 14 14.1. Alright, switch it over to AC. What is your AC voltage across the one? Point zero two eight. Point zero two eight voltage. Yeah, so we're good. All right, check the other one. <laughs> Just saved that money. Fourteen volts is high, but it's not, it's unregulated at that point. So, what's on our other one? Can you reach it? Fourteen point one. Fourteen point one. Okay. What's the AC? Point zero three four. 0 
Those big blues are good, Joe. All right, now move over to the edge connector. I just looked on the uh, schematics, folks. On the edge connector going into the board, the red and white wire is a DC voltage, and then the red and green wire next to it is the ground. What are you reading? 5.2. 5.2. All right, check the other edge connector. I can't remember. I think that's how it does it. 5.2. I wonder why it's not higher than that with the uh, sense lines not plugged into anything. Hmm. Okay, so it's time to mess with... All right, Joe, I think we're good. It's time to mess with the pie position. I think we're about ready to, to slap her in there. Let me unwrap this. All right, folks. Here's all of our pie position stuff. Pie position... So these are the people that made it. Jason made the hardware. He gets to put his name on it. Right? So. Whoa. The. Something goes here, I guess. I don't know. We're going to have to look on the. I don't know how it works. But we'll figure it out. It comes with a keychain. To a pole position keychain. And it comes with this because apparently on some versions of the board there is a... Um, the steering uh, sensor doesn't work with the pie position board. So that he sends you an extra one. If yours doesn't work, you can replace it with this one. So that's pretty cool. All right, so we got to read the instructions on what we need to do to get this sucker to work. So I'm looking at the schematics online, and you can see this capacitor. This is one of the big blues. You can see that it's just across the 10.3 volts in the ground. So you're just looking to see if that capacitor is allowing AC ripple on the line. So you just don't want a lot of AC voltage running through there. Um, and then if you're going to check the, the 5 volts, now usually these uh, AR2 boards have a lot more voltages coming out of them, but on uh, pole position they only use the 5 volts. So if you want to check the 5 volts, all you really got to do is you, you can check on the harness over here where it goes into the CPU and the video board. The red and white wire is 5 volts and the red and green wire is ground. And one board runs the upright, the uh, CPU board and there's a second one that does the same thing and these voltages come down here and they run the video board so that's how we're going to uh, test it okay so on Arcade Shop's website they have a link to a video uh, by Mr. Arcade Jason who designed it and they show you how to do it um, basically you get a memory card put it in your computer you download this little program disk imager uh, and then you update the memory card with the file that he has in there so it is burning it to a 16 gigabyte uh, card that seems big to me you wouldn't think it would need 16 gigs of memory but I guess because it's basically emulating the board it's not just a ROM thing you know the ROMs for a pole position would probably be like I don't know 20k or something like that but this is emulating the entire board and it's all of the the, the uh, program information that the Pi, the Raspberry Pi needs to run. So uh, we're burning the card and then uh, we'll have to install the Raspberry Pi on the board. We found one, but it's used. Joey, where did you find this Raspberry Pi? I found it in the bottom of a Pac-Man machine. Oh, yeah. Why was it not in a... Oh, is it down with the wa oh, The water's propping down. This ain't going to work. All right, let me look at it. Okay, so we have this little Raspberry Pi that Joey said he found in the bottom of a Pac-Man. I don't know, folks. Somebody must have been trying to do the multi. So this is a Model 3, a 3 Model B. Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. I don't know hardly anything about these. Um, we put one in the afterburner that time. So we had, a, we had to buy a new one for an afterburner, and it worked perfect. 
And you know, all of the all of the people that uh, say they're cool say that these are awesome. So uh, we'll see. Uh, so this one's used, but I mean, it should work. Put the card in the back. Let me sneeze. Man, I've been sneezing lately. I think the pollen's getting to me. Okay. So on the back of the the pole position pie, this snaps in place. And the little connector. It'll only go one way. Works better with two hands. Alright, so that's what it looks like from the front. Very nice. And then a little USB cable from there to there. This is actually very similar to how the uh, the afterburner one was, which was called the Smarty Pie. Boy, I like that Smarty Pie. Boy, Marty's a good guy, ain't he, Joe? Yeah, he is. I call him Smarty. Yep. Um, so we did an afterburner one that was similar. This is from a completely different guy, but it's the same kind of concept. And so this plugs into whatever this is. I guess this is some kind of little, I don't know, whatever. But that's how it works. So, I guess we're ready to put it in the machine. Oh, we messed with the monitor. Let me show you what we did with the monitor. Like I mentioned, the guy had a couple G07s. So this one, uh, we put a new flyback, new cap kit. Um, they're <laughs> they remote mounted the the hot fuse, horizontal and output transformer fuse. It used to be soldered to the board, but somebody has mounted it on the back. Um, and we actually have raster. Now it's real ugly because there's some burn in, the famous pole position burn in, of course. We haven't cleaned the tube. Uh, we're probably going to have to do a tube swap because of the burn in. Usually I don't care about burn in. But we're trying to make this one, you know, a little nicer since it's got both games and it's got the new board and all of that. So we'll probably end up swapping another tube in here. But just to test it, of course, uh, we can use this tube. So we've got raster. We've tested the power supplies. Um, we tried to burn the little ROM. We have no clue if our pie works. Uh, the the uh, pie position board should be fine. So we're ready to pop it in and see what happens. All right, so Joe's going to turn her on. Go ahead, Joe. Hit the lights, Joe. Nothing. These take a second, though. The afterburner one did. Maybe. Maybe not. Voltages are fine. Oh, snap. I'll bet the horizontal holds just off. Yep. It's that's the boot screens for pole position. Look, see the cross hatch. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. All right. Uh. Oh hell yeah. Jason, you got the beep 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 boop right. All right, try uh try some horizontal hold action there for us, Joe. The vertical's off too, but do the horizontal. Touch it in the back. Touch it in the back. A lot of people I don't even think understand. I don't get that. He's doing a vertical. Oh, you're missing sync. That's what's going on. So see how that just kept rolling and he's adjusting it and then it stopped and then went back the other way? Basically, he's uh, if it won't lock in at all, then you've got a problem where the sync wire is either broke or it's not connected to the board right or something like that. So we got to look at that. Something in the harness. The sync wire is completely disconnected. Okay, so here's what it seems to be going on with the sync. I've looked in all of the online uh, wiring diagrams, and this is how all of the wiring is done in all of the schematics. Red, green, blue, video return, which is the ground, and then composite sync comes out on pin 11 on a violet and white wire. Okay. So then it comes up here. This is the other side of that. See, they're saying from on the main PCB. And so they have they have two sets of connectors. One for Electrohome, which is what we've got, and one for the Matsushita, the Panasonic. And you connect this little jumper depending on which one you're putting it in. 
Well, I've seen that in every pole position we've ever had. It does that. But on this particular one, it's not wired like that. It has two wires, a separate one for horizontal sync and a separate one from vert for vertical sync uh, coming up on the harness. Okay. Well, if you look in the schematics, they all say that they're wired like this, that that's how the cabinet's wired. Right. But if you look elsewhere in the schematics, color, memory, and output, you have a edge connector here, 9 is red, 10 is green, 12 is blue, and 11 is sync. So that's how he's created the board. They're all wired like that. Except for ours, which wants to be special. And so ours apparently is using these two connections. So it looks like on some versions of the cabinet, they wired it to have separate vertical sync and separate horizontal sync uh, with a jumper on the... the uh, PCB to enable that, and it came out on pins 3 and 8. So ours ours has wires coming off pin 3 and pin 8. Well, the way that the replacement uh, uh, pie position board is made, it doesn't use these. It uses the really common sync wiring, which all of the schematics say is how all the cabinets are wired, except for ours. So ours is very, very rare. But it's not going to be rare for long because I'm going to take the wires that are running there and I'm going to move them over to here. We have rewired it. Joe, hit the switch. Touch it in the back. <laughs> oh, God. That's from the Jerky Boys people. Look it up. If you haven't heard that, you, you missed out. Come on, sink. Give us some sink now. Come on now. Oh, hell yeah. That's much better, Arcade Jason. See all this? That's the official boot up. That's how it looks when it boots up. Yep, there we go. So when the when a real pole position board boots up, that's how it looks. Look, my camera's even even catching the uh, shutter, the the refresh rate. That's a working pole position, people. All right, see if you can coin her up, Joe. He's reaching through from the back. He's gonna touch it in the back. You reset it, Joe. Oh, you hit the service switch. You just changed it to pole position two. <laughs> it did like that. It liked it very, very much. We're trying to coin it up. I wonder if that's wired different on ours too. Could be. It ain't doing nothing, Joe. Well, it didn't coin up, Joe. Hey, we're we're about halfway there though. Boy, it looks pretty. We haven't even adjusted the monitor yet. Maybe you just hit uh, the gas pedal and it starts. Maybe it's got a little free play built in. I don't know. The coin switch ain't doing nothing. I think our coin switches need a little work. All right, we'll see if we can get a credit on it or put it on free play. All right, folks. So. This board will boot without the USB cable. So that's what was going on. We had a bad USB cable. We were just using parts literally laying around, right? So the USB cable wasn't any good. I put a brand new USB cable that we also had laying around on it, and now all the inputs and stuff work. So there's no problem with the board. It was just our cable was bad. We took the cable off and just booted it just for the heck of it, just to see if it would. And yeah, it'll boot up and run through a track like ours was just doing, even with no USB cable. All right, so Joe's gonna coin her up. Coins up fine. Prepare to qualify. Gas works fine. So that was all a lie. Remember when the people acted about the gas? That was all a lie. Shifter works fine, but our steering does not work. However, this is an untested cabinet, so it could be that the uh, the position board that's in there is no good, or it could be that we need to put the new one in. So we're gonna swap in the the new one that goes with the board, and uh, that should get our steering working. Yeah, that's that's a weird board. That must be the one that doesn't work with it. I don't think I've ever even seen that particular type. So we're going to take it out and put the small one in. So here's the serial number. I'll bet you all have been screaming that. Do you think they've been screaming that, Joe? Show us the serial number! So upright zero one zero eight seven. Hmm. Did 
Did they start at one or did they start at a thousand? This is an early one either, either way. Even if it's the 1087th one, it's still pretty early. They made a ton of these. Well, we got a Deer Hunting USA. Target Terror. And that's right. We got her looking pretty good. The sides cleaned up pretty good, but we had to touch up some of the paint. You can completely remove that. I'm not sure if anybody makes reproduction art for it. I guess somebody probably does, but we just touched up where it was messed up. You can kind of tell. We always tell people. Yeah, it's been touched up a little bit. Front ended up looking pretty good. We got our sticker from Slick Nick. <laughs> Slick Nick makes those. Um, that's still, of course, the original overlay. We didn't replace that. We just cleaned it up. We left our cigarette burned, so it's authentic. Original marquee. And the pie position board is working great. We've been watching it for several days and everything's cool. I could point out some of the flaws, but I don't want to do that, you know? I'm not that type. Whenever people do reviews and all they want to do is talk about the bad, whenever the good so far outweighs the bad, I don't really like that. So, um, we're pretty happy with it. Um, the, especially since we didn't even have the board to repair, you know? Now, if we had a board that was repairable, I always prefer the original stuff. But if you don't even have the board, what are you supposed to do, you know? So this is a great um, substitute. So that's it playing... Is that the first one? I guess that's the first one. That's it playing the first one. Let's see if she'll switch over. I haven't tried it in a couple days. Let me see here. I hope. Boy, this will be embarrassing if it doesn't. What if it won't even focus? Like my phone. I mean my camera. It's not my phone. Focus, you bleep. <laughs> Where'd I get that from? Y'all know, right? <laughs> so it's swapping. This is how it actually looks when it boots up the real board. Very scary. The flickering you're seeing is just the camera. It's frame uh, rate is different than the refresh rate on the monitor. So very cool. Alright, so let's coin it up. I'll set it on a tripod and then you can watch me crash several times. I think that's better. You know, it's more realistic too. In the arcade... If you're watching somebody play, you'd be standing over to the side saying, I got next, and you'd be putting your quarter down. And none of y'all even gave me a quarter or anything, so. All right, folks, we're going to play the first one first. What do you think? Prepare to qualify. Like I said, I'm not that good at it. You see the steering is working now since we swapped out the little board that he was so so kind to send us. I will say about the gas, apparently you need to get that just right. You've got to get the, the potentiometer just in the right spot. Because what happens is every time pole position boots, it recalibrates the gas pedal. It's just part of the software. So if you switch from, from the first game to the second game or anything like that. If you don't have the potentiometer, just in the right spot. 
it'll do all kinds of stuff. Like it'll it'll make the uh, it'll make it where it works backwards. When you when you give it gas, it slows you down and stuff and things like that. It's all because the pot needs to be adjusted just slightly. It does a similar thing with the steering wheel because it's the 360 wheel. So there's really no center spot on the wheel. It's just however it's sitting whenever the game's turned on. So like right now, the, the steering wheel's upside down. It's just because of that's how it was whenever uh, I started the game. Oh no! This was typical of me. When I played it back in the day, I have never been good at this game. Ever. Not even once. Joey's much better at it than me. There we go. We didn't get far. Oh look, I'm number three. Now you see the Joe, Joe, Joe? That's when Joe was test playing it. So it does save. It does save your high scores um, on the pie position. Now the other thing is, if we had problem uh, where it would reset, but what we figured out was it was actually just the credit button was a little touchy in our cabinet. So if that button uh, is a little resistive e <laughs> if it ha if the resistance in the button is starting to trip where it's sometimes shorting and stuff if it get if the if the button acts up enough the uh, the game will switch into the other game because that's what happens when you press the button so you got to make sure your button's in good shape all right so let's try swapping it into pole position two hit the button Oh, I gotta put a credit on it. We did Fuji. Let's hear, let's just go evil and I'll try this seaside one. But there's no way in crap I can do anything on. But we'll try. We're gonna try, people. Prepare to qualify. Prepare to qualify. Oh, th there's also dip switch settings in the in the menu to change the speed and stuff like that. So you can change the top speed, believe it or not. <laughs> For me, it would probably do me better to just have it as low as possible. I'm shifting down to try to slow down, but it's not really working for me. I mean, you can do it by letting off the gas too, like that, but it takes quite a while to get decent at this game. This was not one they wanted you to put a quarter in and be any good at, you know. I got placed number 81st. That's decent, isn't it? How many people? I saw four cars and somehow I'm number 81. <laughs> yeah, so I might not even be able to qualify to get to the next lap. Let's see if I can play one more uh, track. That one was a little curvy for me. I guess I could do the test one, but that's no fun. Let's do this one. It's probably even harder, but I'll be all right. Prepare to qualify. Mm. They always put them signs right in the way on the side of the road.
I guess you can kind of slow yourself down by going on the rumble strip. So, hey, I'm, not, I'm number 76 this time. I'm getting better. But I didn't qualify. But there you go, folks. That is Atari's pole position two and pole position one running on the new pie position board. I think it's a pretty cool little board. If you have gas pedal problems, a lot of people have had those problems. If you have gas pedal problems, like I said, it's all in the potentiometer. You may think that you've got it in the right spot, but if, if you've got that thing off just a little bit from where basically the range of calibration works, it's going to give you problems. So if you've got one and it's giving you problems after you've put the pie position board in, get that potentiometer rotated just a little bit and then try it again. And then if it's still wrong, rotate it a little bit more. And if it's still wrong rotate a little bit more but if you get it just right the thing works great like this one is so um, I've, I've noticed that when people have uh, issues with this pie position that's the issue that they usually have is that the gas pedal is giving them fits um, a lot of people just choose to replace the pot on the gas pedal um, but then again if you replace it you got to get it adjusted just right too it's a 5k pot but if so let's say that you've got it adjusted where with the uh with the pedal up it's at zero k or whatever right i've just thrown a number out there it's adjusted all the way one on one side it doesn't want it like that because whenever you go to max throttle you're going to be at like 1k resistance and it don't want it like that so let's say you've got it adjusted and it's at 3500 k whenever the the pedal's all the way up and then whenever you press the pedal it uh, raises it to 4500 K resistance or whatever you see the, the problem is whenever you, you give it uh, whenever you give the, the pedal full motion it's not really giving you a, a full range of 0 to 5k it's just moving the pot a little bit so if you're in that right window this thing works perfect if you're in the wrong window it doesn't work completely properly it'll uh, since it recalibrates every time it's just a strange little um, artifact of the way it was originally designed and then the way that the, the replacement hardware is kind of emulating that. It's a, it's a problem with the stuff going on in MAME, I believe. So anyway, but as you can see, it's working fine. Everything works great. Cool little board. We didn't have to buy anything extra. We didn't have to buy uh, anything for the gas pedal. They gave us the board that goes on the steering uh, wheel. You, I showed you our old one. It's just a weird kind of setup. And once we swapped to the new one, which we just screwed right in, everything worked fine. Um, we had the problem where the sink wires weren't connected in our cabinet the traditional way. They were connected uh, 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 utilizing two other pins that we showed you in the, uh, in the manual. But we swapped that over and everything's cool. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll show you how it looks lined up with our other games here. Very cool. Got a little centipede cocktail there still. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. I love stuff like this whenever they uh, fix a big problem. This is one of the biggest problems in collecting old arcade games is you can't get the freaking pole position board to work again, right? So they've, they've created a new one, and it really helps us. So thank you to Arcade Jason. He should have sent it to us for free, though, but we had to pay full price. What in the world? <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I'm joking, of course. I don't even know Arcade Jason, so but uh so I'm, I'm not giving it a good review because they paid us off or anything we just uh, nobody's ever gave us anything to review really on our site with the exception well a couple people have but most people have not <laughs> um, but uh it's a good board anytime we need a pole position board this is what we're going to do with ours until some kind of better solution comes along if there is a better solution this one is perfectly acceptable it would be cool as well to put more games on it i think you could by just adding the roms in um 
I believe you could add more driving games into it pretty easily. So uh, that might be something for somebody to experiment with. I'll bet people have already figured it out. So I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Uh, uh, hey, you know how you can support our channel? There is a link down below to Amazon. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, follow that link. And whatever you do, it tells them, hey, that they were sent here by Joe's Video Games. And they give us a little tip, a little piece of whatever you decide to purchase on Amazon. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. My brother has his own channel here on YouTube. Oh, it's the hunting game. I thought I heard a wild animal. My brother has his own channel here on YouTube, the My Brother Donnie channel. The link is down below. I'll see you over there. We have just started working on a new uh, mobile home. that, Well, an abused mobile home that somebody turned into a convenience store. And we're flipping it back. So if you like that we were able to get this pole position 2 back up and running, we're going to get a mobile home back up and running. So we'll see you over there on that channel. But we'll see you back here in just a couple of days uh, with a pinball video we've got a good one that we're working on that we're uh, we're going to start uploading the videos of uh just here in a couple days so we'll see you then hope you enjoyed it this is atari's pole position <laughs>